I'm Luann. Today's theme is bath time. Bath time can be a literacy adventure. Pouring and dumping, not to mention the splashing. You can use pool noodles to slip in some math and science learning. Pool noodles are relatively inexpensive, especially if you get them at the dollar store. For this activity, I recommend getting two to three different colored pool noodles and slice them into about one inch slices. Cut them into about one inch, one inch slices. And they're pretty easy to cut. Um, you can start your math learning just by getting the pool noodles into the tub by use, doing the one-to-one -one correspondence. And that just is counting with the object. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten pool noodles. So then you can, once you have your pool noodles in the tub, then you can start sorting them by color. And I'm gonna take them out of the tub just because I have a smaller tub. So we've got blue and red and green. And then you can maybe demonstrate initially, but then let them try to match them into the correct piles. And if you want to, at the end you can count well, how many blue noodles do you have? How many red noodles? How many green noodles do you have? You can do all kinds of things with math with this. Now we have our colors sorted, so let's do some patterning. And you can start with a simple pattern that I call an AB pattern, which just means using two different colors. So let's do, we've got blue and red and blue, and have them finish it. See if they, does that, does, does that go? Decide if that goes, or? Is that the right way to go? Go ahead, so you got blue, red, blue, red. And then let them create their own pattern. And they may create the same exact pattern you did, but that's okay, that's good practice. And then you could also, once they're getting really good at that, you could do a more complex pattern like an ABC pattern and use three colors. So do your blue, your red, your green, blue, and then have them finish it and so on. And let them create their own pattern. It's just a lot of fun, you can get kind of crazy with it. So we've done our one-to-one -one correspondence, we've done some patterning. Now let's do, let's talk about floating. And they probably noticed them in the tub, them floating. Ask them maybe why do you think it's floating? Can they sink it? What can they use to sink it? Um, what happens when you push it down? Pops right back. Have them do that a few times. You can also start stacking your pool, pool noodles, that's a hard word to say, and have them predict how many pool noodles can they stack before it topples over. So we've got, we're gonna start with our blue one here. We've got one, I'm gonna guess, what should I guess? Seven, I forgot to do my guessing. Seven, I'm gonna guess seven. We've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, eight. So I was close, I predicted seven, that I got it up to eight. So we have eight pool noodles in our tub. And remember the one-to-one -one correspondence that we talked about at the beginning. You can use that same skill, that same learning activity to get the pool noodles out of the tub. So we have eight pool noodles. So we're gonna count backwards. Eight, seven, six, five, six, seven, four, three, two, one, zero. No more pool noodles in the bathtub. Thanks for joining me today.